so that I can get it all on review. All quizzes should be turned in at this moment. We're starting with number 24. Which is a good one to start with because we actually did a problem just like this yesterday on the mini review. Okay? So, what do we do to solve? Our job is to solve this equation. What do we do? Natural on both sides. Natural law on both sides. Now, clearly, this is a calculator problem, so it's going to be on the free response part. So when I look at your work, I'm going to want to see that step. And then that's gone, and we have this. And then what do we do? Our job is to solve for x. So what do we do? What? Subtract the one. And then divide by three. And we talked about this yesterday, how to type this in. So let's everybody type it in, making sure that you're taking the whole numerator divided by three. If you don't get 4.4314, 4, 4, try again. Make sure you're closing your parentheses around your 10. When you're minus 1, you're going to get equals and divide it by 3. Okay, everybody got it? All right. I'm going to write this formula up here on the board. You're going to have both formulas. You're going to have to pick which one. How do I know this is the right formula for problem 25? Compounded. It's compounded monthly, which means n is 12. So here we go. Oh, wait, I turned the paper. I put my numbers in. So uh, I'm going to invest $1,200 at 0.031. Remember, it has to be a decimal divided by 12 for 10 years. <coughs> this is one of the easy ones because I don't need to do anything tricky. I just need to type it in, right? So I'll make this 120 to get myself started. And then I'll just type it in. and 46 cents. Be careful, that's exactly what I got. But look at, the, look at the very beginning of the problem. What does it say? To the nearest dollar. So if I'm rounding this off to the nearest whole dollar, it would be 1635. Everybody see that? It's one of those minor little ways you can miss points. You're not paying attention. All right, what formula do I need for problem 26? I need my first. So let's see what we got here. We've got starting with 154, ending with 912 in three and a half hours. Okay, you guys. Three and a half is not a percent. So don't be changing that. You only change percents. Well, three and a half is three and a half. All right, I need to solve it. What am I going to do? First, I have to divide. Look up here, guys. Look. If you jump in an LN right off the bat, guess what? Nothing cancels. Because what's the rule? I can only cancel if LN and E are touching. If you do that, you're going to have a big mess. It's solvable, but it's not pleasant. So step one has to be divide by 154. Then you can LN both sides. I 
finally divide by the 3.5. <coughs> so what do we get for our growth time? that that's a small number, but that's actually a huge number because that is like an interest rate. So what does that represent? 50% growth. Yeah, this thing is really growing fast. But this is the answer. This is fine. Right here. That's the answer to the question. Okay, number 27 we are not missing because that would be embarrassing because all the little freshmen down the hall are doing this problem on their exam. The freshman, it's algebra one. Write the equation of a line. All right, so how do we write the equation of a line? What do we do first? We find the slope. We find the slope. So that's y minus y over x minus x. Eight minus six, four minus five. So it looks like my slope is negative two. Then what do I do? Then I pick a point. I guess that one doesn't really matter. So y minus six equals negative two x minus five. Do my distributive property and solve for y. There it is. There's the equation of your line. All right, 28, we go to the store. We see something we'd like to buy. It costs $83.20. percent off coupon and of course you have to pay seven percent tax so you go grab this thing off the shelf whatever it is you take it up to the checkout and they make these adjustments they take off 20 percent and then they add on seven percent okay we're going to do this as a multiplication problem so what do i multiply by to reflect a 20% lessening discount. 0.8 or 0.80, 80%. What do I multiply to reflect an extra seven being added on? 1.07. 1.07. 1.07. So So 83.2 times 0.8 times 1.07 it looks like I'm going to pay $71.22 for this thing. All right, what do I do with this next one? Oh my God, this has already been on two tests this semester, this question. What do we do? Times percent plus amount times percent equals amount times percent. Then we start plugging in numbers. So <laughs> we know our percents are eighty per or no eight percent. Be careful, eight percent. So 0 0.08, 90%, 0 0.08, 90 percent, and ending up with a 67 percent, or 65. I'm having trouble. 65. Now, how many gallons should be added to 100 gallons of that? 
What goes here? X plus 100. X plus 100 or 100 plus X. Either way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So now we solve. So I want you to solve this right now on your own. Because I remember on our test, some of us can actually get this, but then we can't solve it. So take a second and solve this. And we'll do it together. you got 43.86 gallons that's what you need to get so if you're struggling with solving it you need to spend some time with it all right number 30 simple pop. there already five, five. three more are coming up so what do I have up there eight X's on the top of that fraction and the Y's are doing the same thing except they're coming down so that's going to be Y to the ninth on the bottom and actually the Z's are doing the same thing these are going to the top so that will be Z to the on the top. Okay. Now, square everything. So that's going to be 16 and 9. Don't square the exponents though. When we have a double exponent, what do we do? Times them. So that's x to the 16, z to the 16, and y to the 18. Again, there is nothing stopping you from going home, rewriting that problem on another sheet of paper, and working through it again to practice. All right, and then 31, our box problem. We did some of these yesterday. Here we go. All right, so this piece of paper is 20 by 16. We're going to cut the corners out just like we always do. And we're going to fold up the flaps and make a box. Write the equation for the volume of the box. 20 minus x. What? 20 um, minus 2x. 2x. 15 or 16. 
minus 2x and x. So don't miss that. If you do it, just tell me you can study. Because they're always the same. It's never any different. And then we want to know what's the domain of this function. So the domain is going to be a, an interval from a minimum x to a maximum x. What's it going to be in this problem? 0 to 8. 0 to 8. This number is always 0. You can't cut a negative piece of paper. It's always bigger than 0. And it's always, your top limit is half the smaller function. <coughs> Now it says, what is the viewing window that you're using to graph? So, since I'm not sitting next to you, and we're not doing it together, I want to know what you're typing in on your calculator. So what are you setting x min, x max, y min, and y max at? What are you doing in this problem? Three of those are automatic. X min is zero. X, min is zero. x max is, in this problem, eight always zero for the minimum, eight for this problem, y minimum always zero. zero, and then this one, we're working with pencil, we might have to erase it, but we're going to start with what? 500. We'll see if it's high enough or not. So I'm going to go to y equals. Make sure you're typing in your new equation. It sounds so dumb, kids, but this happens all the time. Kids will say, I'm going to give you the right answer. And it's because they didn't change the equation. You have to put in your new equation, and you have to put in your new window. Somebody put 600 there? Yes, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so then second calc, here we go. We're going to find our maximum. So we're going to set our left bound, our right bound, and take a wild guess. 2.9. I'm just randomly rounding. There'll be directions on the exam. 420.11, or maybe there are directions on here. To the nearest hundred. Alrighty. So 2.95, comma 420.11. Now, that is not the answer to the question. That is the high point on the graph, right? So then I choose whether the answer to the question is 2.95 or 420.11. So it says, what size corners? The corners are X. So the answer to the question is 2.95 inches. 2.95 inches are the corners. Okay? All right, so now I've videoed everything.